This week on HomeKit News, IKEA Smart Button, Motion Sensor and Air Quality Monitor with Matter Over Thread. Welcome back everybody. After many of you seem to enjoy my previous video on the new IKEA products, namely their contact sensor and leak sensor, I thought I'd have a look at some more. These are the new air quality monitor, a smart button and a motion sensor. And before I forget, I'll also briefly utilize one of their new smart bulbs I reviewed last time. Let's have a closer look now, starting with the company's motion sensor, pronounced by Jan, my Swedish colleague. IKEA MIG SPRAY. Thank you. This takes two AA batteries, just like most of their other sensors, so let's see what's inside. So we've got the usual paperwork, and one of these also contains one instance of the matter code. This is the sensor itself, and compared to many recent motion sensors, it is a little on the large side, to be honest. The sensor comes with a corner bracket, which is fairly easy to remove, unless, like me, you have no fingernails to speak of. Inside are a couple of double-sided stickers, along with screw holes if you want to fit it more permanently. The bracket can only fit in one position, and basically it's designed to fit in a corner, like so. You do need to use the bracket so that you can remove the sensor to get to the battery compartment. And as you can see, there's space for the batteries along with a reset or pairing button. You also get another instance of the matter code in two formats on the edge. That's our initial look at the motion sensor. So we'll clear the deck and look at the next device, a smart button called... IKEA Bilresa. So as with the motion sensor, this uses two AAA batteries. So let's have a quick look inside. Here it is, and I do like the design. It comes with two buttons represented by divots or press dimples of differing sizes, which would be handy for those with sight issues. This button also comes with a tiny magnetic plate that you can stick to any non-magnetic surface with the help of the stickers. As you can see, the magnet strength is pretty decent, but if you have a magnetic surface you want to use, like our fridge, the button sticks to the surface just as well without it. You'd think the battery compartment is on the back, but actually it's right underneath the buttons themselves. You remove the cover via this little latch and just like that you're inside. You can see the actual buttons that are pressed along with the pairing button and LED. So that's our intro to the button, so let's see the third device on the list. This is IKEA's new multi-sensor and on this occasion you won't need batteries as this is powered via a USB-C cable and plug which you do have to provide for yourself. The name of this product is IKEA Alpstuga. Thank you very much. Let's have a look at what's in the box now, and the device is very minimalist for sure. The top button has a single large button, whilst the front is home to the display of sorts. On the underside you have four buttons, the first of which is for pairing and reset, whilst the second allows you to switch between 12 or 24 hour mode for the clock, and for selecting Fahrenheit or Celsius. The third and fourth button are for setting the clock to the correct time. The back is home to a USB-C port for power, along with some vents for the various sensors, and it's very compact. Now, even if you don't want to use it in your smart home, it'll still show all the relevant sensor information soon after it's powered up, which is pretty cool. We've got the carbon dioxide reading at present, but we can cycle through them, continuing with PM 2.5, temperature, humidity, and finally the clock, which I've yet to set. Let's get this device into Apple Home quickly, and I'll spare you the whole setup process, but it did add first time, as did all the products in this video. I'll go through the standard procedure, and that's now set up, so let's have a look at the details. As you can see, there's already an update waiting directly in Home, which is great to see. All the sensors are collected in this one page, so you get air quality, PM 2.5 density, CO2 levels, and humidity. Now, strangely enough, the temperature sensor is missing. It's definitely there though, as you can view it in third-party apps like the EVAP, for example, as you can see here. So if you want to create automations with temperature, you can still do so. This device offers much the same as another product I have here, namely the Qingping Air Monitor Lite. Both show PM 2.5, although the Qingping does also show PM10 for what it's worth. It also has CO2 levels, as well as temperature of course, which is pretty close, and humidity readings. The Qingping does have a clock, although it's pretty small and not viewable separately like you can with IKEA's offering. The big difference between the two, aside from the displays with the Qingping using OLED, is that this uses Wi-Fi, whereas the IKEA model uses Master Over Thread, of course. Still, the Qingping does come with an internal battery, so it can continue working without the use of the USB-C cable for a while, if necessary. 
Let's do a quick PM 2.5 test for these two sensors. And in this case, I'm going to use an incense stick to trigger the sensors. Now, even though the Qingping is first to show any changes, the IKEA model isn't too far behind, although it isn't maybe as dynamic with the changes. One thing to note is that the two devices are likely calibrated for different regions, but the more likely difference at higher levels is down to the quality of the hardware. The Jingping uses a laser particle sensor, whereas the IKEA model likely uses a much cheaper optical or LED sensor, which is always going to be less accurate the higher the levels get. For homes, this isn't usually an issue, but it's worth noting. To clean the air, I used a SmartMe P2 air purifier, and you can see the full video review for this via the link in the corner. A quick pros versus cons now, and for the price, you're getting four sensors plus a clock, and it uses USB-C for power. Aside from the less accurate PM2.5 sensor, the only con is the temperature sensor not showing up in Apple Home. Moving on to the motion sensor now, and one quick tip is if you select the room you want to add the device to automatically, you simply add the device whilst that room is selected in the Home app. This added first time, and as you can see, it's listed as a present sensor, which isn't quite right, but it also has a separate built-in light sensor. Now, both the motion and light sensor have their separate sections, and both can be used in automations, of course. Currently, I'm using my trusty Acara FP300 in our corridor, but for the next quick test, I've added the IKEA sensor next to it. So in this test, the motion sensor in the FP300 picks me up first as I pass under from the opposite direction, but this is mostly due to the inability to angle the IKEA model so it faces down. In summary, it's great to have a light sensor as well as the motion sensor and a corner bracket. Plus, I do like the countdown reset, so it's never truly blind during the cooldown period. Still, you can't adjust the detection range in Apple Home, and I found the light sensor slow to update changes, and it can't be angled like many other motion sensors. Finally, to the smart button, which for a single purchase comes in basic white, but you can buy a triple pack that offers a cream color, brick red and green color option. The button is already added to Apple Home in this case, so I'm going to test the responsiveness in Apple Home. As you can see, each button has a standard single, double and long press option, so let's see how quickly they respond. The response times are as good as you'd see with any Zigbee button, in my experience anyway, although you'd also want to see that the device it's triggering responds in a timely manner too, of course. Interestingly, if you ever want to use this button to control IKEA lights, but without getting a smart home involved, you can do so by pairing the button directly to one of these lights. You simply press the reset button four times whilst being no more than five centimeters away from the light you want to control. The button and light are now directly paired to each other and I can control the light with the button. As this is not a dimmer, like the Bill Ressa dimmer switch, I can only perform on and off with the two buttons, so it's pretty basic and probably not worth it. I also don't believe it's possible to have the buttons and lights set in this manner and in a smart home setup at the same time. So the pros are direct pairing to lights if absolutely necessary, multiple colour options and a decent magnetic base. I can't really complain for the price, but I'd love to have seen a triple button version, maybe sometime in the future. Finally, to the pros and cons, and although these do range in price, with the multi-sensor being the most expensive at around $30, I believe, they are really good value for money. Matter over thread is another pro, which give them a certain amount of future proving, which is amazing for the price. Triple A batteries makes getting replacements very easy, so this is another plus. As their matter over thread, this means you don't need the IKEA Dirigera hub if you don't want to, as long as you have a thread border router and matter controller, of course. If you don't have these set up in the IKEA ecosystem, you can still get firmware updates directly in Apple Home, which is great. The only slight con is with the Alpstuga multi-sensor with the temperature not showing in, a in Apple Home. Hopefully a firmware update can address this. So that's our look at some more IKEA Matter Over Thread goodies. I imagine some of you already have these, and if you do, let me know your experiences in the comment section below. And remember, if you've got any questions on this or any of my other videos, ask away and I'll always reply. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, show some love by giving it a like, share if you can, and do subscribe if you haven't done so already. It just remains for me to leave you with a very fitting quote this time 
from comedian Stephen Wright. 